Good afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Danilo Aquisto. Thanks so much for tuning into the show today. While the rest of the country is out there trying to catch Pokemons with Pokemon Go, recently I found out that apparently this is the biggest game that's ever been created in US history. And it's just taking the world by storm. It is a Fashion Thursday on the show today, though, and I'm very excited to introduce you to Lucanium Dinghy, one of the most incredible designers. Uh, recently, I got a huge privilege to go and see him show his work at Menswear Week uh, in Cape town and man oh man is this man talented he is so uh, passionate about local design he's so passionate about ethical fashion we'll be having that conversation later on in the show plus we mentioned yesterday that you could win one of his scarves he did with uh, another designer and you can win that on the show today the entries are going to close at 4 30 this afternoon you're going to send through a photo of you wearing your scarf and showing us how you like to wear your scarf he'll choose his favorite one on facebook and on twitter and then that person will get to win themselves a the scarf we'll announce it at the end of today's show so make sure you stay tuned to find out if you are a winner then also for winner home on afternoon express today trevor king from caesar stone is here and we're going to be looking through some kitchen trends for 2016 it should be really really interesting if you're renovating a kitchen building a new house or looking to sell and trying to make sure that your kitchen looks the best of the best when it comes to trending kitchens i do know we're making something super delicious for dinner in the kitchen genie's on standby so as luck would have it, just before the weekend, I come down with the flu. And it doesn't even feel like the flu, it feels more like the black lung. And I suppose it's probably bad karma because I'm always complaining about the awful weather, even though we've had a really mild winter. So then I considered, let's spare some thought for our friends, the United Arab Emirates. Last week, the mercury in Dubai reached 50 degrees Celsius. And if they thought that was bad, Next week, if you take in the humidity factor, it's going to be 64 degrees Celsius in Dubai. Man, it's good to be in South Africa today. <laughs> and today, of course, I'm gonna be in the kitchen with my darling Clem. And if I have to tell you, Italian cars, mm. Mm -hmm. Italian men, mm. Italian fashion, mm. but Italian food <laughs> is just on a whole other level. So, and are you going to be teaching me how to make Absolutely. quite a healthy pasta veggie dish? Yeah, I mean, we're packing, like I said, not feeling too great. We're packing in all the veggies in today. The best thing about Italian food is you don't have to be Italian to cook Italian. Because it's like the simplest cuisine to cook in the world. Yeah. So we're going to get started straight away. So yes. we're making a ratatouille, okay. right? Quite famous. I mean, since the movie, people know about it. So we're putting it together. We're going to make our own version today. We're doing yeah. a, ra a roasted ratatouille with a pita pasta with some fresh basil in there as well. It's going to be awesome. Minus the rodents. Let's Minus get the rodents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I love using um, these baby marrows. You can mm -hmm. use the big one as well. Whatever's in season, whatever's in shelf. Okay. So we've kind of like cut them into chunks at the moment, but be creative and also keep in mind texture. Texture is everything. Yeah. So I mean, take some of the bigger pieces, cut them diagonally. So you've got a mixture of flavors as well. You're not having all your vegetables being like one size. Exactly. Norm normally the rule, we try to say, if you're going to be roasting something or cooking a mixture of vegetables, try and keep them the same size because that way they cook evenly. Yeah. Throwing that one out the window today. Just go with it. Could be crazy. Yeah, exactly. So that but also when you can chew your vegetables like that, I feel like you can taste them a little bit better. That's so true. And we're not killing our vegetables, which yeah. is very important. Ratatouille, so often you go to like these old school restaurants and they make ratatouille and you don't know what you're eating because it's basically like baby food, like, you know, no. Well, no. the really good Italian restaurants do it like how you're doing it. Yeah, nice and chunky, of yeah. course. Of course. And Today. life's too short for bad Italian food, I figure. I think it's almost like, it's actually like a serious crime in Italy. Oh, no, gee yeah. whiz. I've never had a bad meal in Italy. Oh, wow, okay, that's yeah. pretty good. That's amazing. Yeah. Just testimony to the cuisine then. Yeah. Cool. But the ice cream's even better than what their food is. I mean, gelato is oh, insane. Oh, my goodness. I mean, winter yeah. doesn't matter, gelato every day. Yeah, definitely. And... As I said, Italian men, it's like, whoosh, it's, I mean, it's, it's a hazard to your, your neck. You nearly gave us a whoop right? No, I know. <laughs> Just thinking about it. <laughs> it happens. I'm totally human. <laughs> cool. So red onion went in there. You can use a normal white um, onion, but I mean, red onion's got that slightly sweeter taste. Yeah. And we're roasting everything out. Um, everything's going to get roasted, so all the natural sugars are going to come out anyway. Yeah. Um, Red pepper. So this is where preparation needs to be. You've done all before. There's <laughs> a lot of chopping. It's a lot of chopping, yeah. right? So a lot of people say that they actually have a bit of a reaction to the skin on the red pepper. They get like heartburn, and really? I totally get it. because It's quite rich. So what you can do is you can blister it on a gas stove or in the oven, and then take the skins off. Okay, explain what it means to blister. Let me show you. Cool. 
So you get your heat on. Yeah. And with the whole pepper still being before you cut it up. Okay. Just pop it over your flame. What's going to happen is it's going to start charring, right? And you're going to actually give it a blister like skin. Exactly. As soon as it starts blistering, put it in a bowl, cover it with cling wrap, let it steam for a bit, and just rub all that skin off. Really? Done. Okay, so great. Easy. So we're going to keep this quite chunky as well. You see, actually, someone made a mistake because we're doing an Italian dish, but we only have two cloves of garlic. That's also a sin in Italy. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. At no, least no, no. ten. Yeah, no, definitely. Okay. Well, this one's six. And I'm six, so we need a lot more garlic okay. than that. So we'll add a lot more to that. So these two, just roughly chop it. Again, okay. we don't want to worry about cutting everything too we'll fine. We'll throw some more in in the commercial break. Absolutely. Promise. <laughs> <laughs> then we got some aubergine, right? Yes. I love aubergine. I don't think we cook enough aubergine anyway, so love yeah. it. Add a lot of it. So as you can see, my aubergine's kind of gone brown already. Mm -hmm. People freak out because aubergine changes color so quickly. Yeah. Don't freak it's out. Not it's normal. Absolutely. Yeah. So just get nice pieces of it. Keep Chuck. it nice and rough, absolutely. I don't know if you remember, like back in the day, people used to like salt their aubergines. Yeah, drain do you pre-salt yours? I usually pre-salt in my the one dish that I can actually make. It's a little veggie base, and it starts okay. off with aubergine. Never do it again. Really? It's so unnecessary. Okay, good. Some silly nonna made that up, and it's not true. Okay, Thank sorry, you. all the nonnas out there connected <laughs> to the family. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> the family. <laughs> the family. So that goes in some fresh basil. We're going to add some basil in the end again. Okay. Love basil. Absolutely crazy as well. You're adding more flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And oh, extra virgin. Nectar of the gods. <laughs> the Roman gods. Yes. There we go. And then salt. Salt is also very important. Lose out some of that extra moisture in there. Help okay. to cook off better. Right. So that's going to go to the oven. Toss everything together for about 45 minutes. And I'd say 170 is quite a weird temperature. You don't want to be too high, you're going to roast it. 160, which is going to stew. So let it cook out slowly and nice, nice and like, you know, caramelized beautifully. Exactly. Is that what that. it's going to end up That's like? That's it. Oh, that is amazing. And I like how you used a variety of tomatoes that you didn't Oh, throw yes. In thank there. you so much. That was a test. Hello. That was a test. Well done. She's not feeling well, but she's on the game. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I really hope that you at home are cooking with us. All you need to do is visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and there you can find our website, you can find our shopping list, and you can make this delicious ratatouille with us today. Over to you, Danilo. You guys might be making a ratatouille, but it's more like a rata. Ooh, wee! It sounds super delicious. Can't wait to see the final product. Now, after the break, right here on Afternoon Express, we're going to be literally wrapping ourselves in the world of fashion. Lucanium Dinghy is joining us in the loft today. And you could be winning this Dinghy Coot scarf simply by sending us a really cool picture of yourself wearing the scarf the way you love to. Either on Facebook, there's a post that's pinned to the top of our page over there. You can comment with the photograph. Or on Twitter, at Afternoon Chat, using the hashtag Afternoon Express. Show us how you like to wear your scarves and you could be winning this in Dingy Coots scarf. It is really, really incredible and we'll be chatting more about sustainable fashion and particularly locally sourced and produced ethical fashion. Don't go anywhere. Well, a walk up warm. Welcome back to Afternoon Express as we're having a Fashion Thursday on the show today. Joining us in the loft, we have a young emerging South African designer, Lukanyo Mdingi. But judging from what I saw at Fashion Week, definitely not up and coming in any way. He's recently represented South Africa eth uh, ethical fashion, particularly in countries such as Italy and England, speaking on the importance of African designs. And at the tender age of only 24, he is steadily becoming one of the top designers in the country. It's always good to have you. Welcome oh, back. Thank Thank you so much. It's good to be here. Yeah, so I, I really loved your show, by the way, and I, just a little bit of a story from my side. I almost ruined one of your designer garments, which I found <laughs> at the AKJP Collective, which I wore for an event. It got a pen mark on it. I didn't it's know. all sorted out. Don't even good. worry about it. Just had to put it on national TV so I could be <laughs> forgiven nationally. Let's talk about uh, your campaign, Africa, this is for you. Hashtag, uh, now I can remember the hashtag without having to say the words yeah. out, but talk me through that campaign and, and how you're involved. Yeah, so pretty much for the past two years, um, I've been in the pleasure and the company of so many different South African mm. um, creatives, whether it's an art director or whether it's a photographer and also my fellow peers as fashion mm. designers. And uh, the true core and the true intention that we all have is contributing to our own country. And coming up with the hashtag is so much more than just um, me as a young fashion designer, but it's about how we can all 
use our particular mediums, whether it's going to be photography or fashion and art, to polarize the world and to polarize Africa and to show the true value and the importance of supporting South Africa. Yeah. So people must go look at that hashtag, hashtag ATIFY, Africa, Absolutely. this is for, for you. you. Because everything we do is pretty much for Africa. Yeah. It's just to enrich and to empower African yeah. landscape in the best way that we possibly can. Yeah. We'll unpack that in a bit, but let's go back to your heritage and your, your love for fashion and where it all began yeah. and how you choose to incorporate your African heritage in your designs. Absolutely. Well, collection after collection, it goes through a whole process of just exploring my African identity mm -hmm. and not just necessarily pertaining myself to my closer roots, but also just looking at the different heritages that coexist here in the whole of Africa. Mm -hmm. So um, I have to, well, I believe in looking at through different stories, whether it's going to be through techniques or print work or um, different styles of creating clothes. I'll see how I can cross, how I can bring that into the collections that I've created together with my own identity of a contemporary menswear designer yeah. so um, it's 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 quite a process but it's a it's a revealing experience and sure. it's a it's a great process because you're identifying so many different things mm. and it's important yeah so many challenges I see are faced by local designers especially in the industry that we face with where yeah. um, you know sweatshops are a real thing and people are trying to find cheaper and cheaper products and I know you're really passionate about locally produced locally sourced ethically sourced ethically produced uh, garments uh, you must go through a lot of challenges though what are you facing as a young designer what are the challenges that you're facing in terms of trying to create a career out of fashion yeah it's just um finding the right production houses as well finding the right production is pretty much the core and the foundation of creating these beautiful collections that people see on the runways not only the beautiful collection but creating the clothes that we are wanting to sell or mm. actually do sell yeah. in the stores so it's just um identifying who can we work with and finding the right school laborers but also finding laborers that do things well and properly and making sure that the environment where they create these clothes that everybody see is a good environment where it is ethical and it is ethically produced, not a, a sweat mill where there's hundreds and thousands of um, poor ladies or young children that are creating the clothes that you actually, that we are producing as South African yeah. fashion designers. Is it a real crisis for you? Are we facing a crisis in our country when it comes to sourcing things ethically? Well, the thing is, um, there's a great need to have more production mills here in South Africa. The, this industry is insanely relentless, and it's really important for us to just push our message further. So by making sure that we have the right support, regard, like if, whether it's from our fashion councils or whether it's from our government, just to have spaces and to have um, particular facilities where we are able to go to and create these clothes. Yeah. We need more support because a lot of support yeah. actually isn't, isn't there. And we need support from customers as well mm -hmm. in order to find the gap in the market and to see as a designer, okay, there's a particular yeah. gap there. How can I accommodate for yeah. that particular need? The more that you empower us, the more that we're able to empower others. Sure, I love that. So let's talk more about the consumer. Yeah. Why are the consumers not buying local? Or are they? Are you proud of them? Or is there yeah. this real need for people to support local more? Because I have noticed that it is, it is expensive to buy local. It, is. it isn't necessarily going to be something that people are jumping at immediately. Yeah. That's something that us young designers, in fact, designers as a whole, have to figure out to navigate. It's quite difficult when we are, our competitors are, um, I don't want to, uh, retailers, mm. let's just say, that produce fast fashion. And it's the retailers that you might see at um, the shopping malls. Yeah. So it's our responsibility to produce clothes that are still affordable. But at the same time, I do understand why the costs of things are high because mm. the production time is higher, the materials are higher, the textiles are higher. Mm. So um, it's all about positioning yourself as a designer to see yeah. which market segment you want to break into. Yeah. So um, it's 50-50, it's you yeah, know. So how do you get local, local buyers to buy local fashion? Buying culture is not a huge culture here in South Africa. There's very limited places that actually do buy into young labels and say we want quantities of hundreds but also with that uh, I understand why they wouldn't answer because there's not many facilities that are able to facilitate a hundred units mm. for particular designers yeah. so there's a whole bunch of logistics that come into these issues and it's our responsibility just as young fashion designers and established fashion designers mm. to figure it out but okay. also to help hopefully get some help from um, fashion councils and from public or some way 
to just um, nurture the whole process to see how people can buy more into local yeah. goods. So let's talk through some of the things that you're very passionate about, and particularly around this ethics issue and yeah. uh, organic produ production. I know cotton is always a big thing. A yeah. lot of designers complain about not being able to find fabric in our country. Absolutely. What do you think the biggest issues are and how do we solve them? Well, that's the thing, though. Um, we don't create any of our own textiles. Well, I mean, that's quite a huge thing that I'm saying, but if we are, we're not doing it at a mass, big production where a where it's accessible to a lot of designers. And um, like I, together with my fellow peers, we always dream of a world where we can produce locally, but not just producing the clothes, but the actual raw materials of the yarns where we have like cotton fields where we are able to produce our particular natural fabrics. Yeah. And there's so many things that we're trying to figure out as well. And the only best thing that we can do is just send out that message and um, use platforms like these to send out that message because it's very important. Local support is by far one of the most important things to us young designers and as well as so many other people. Sure, I'm so glad that you positioned yourself this way and it's great to have this conversation, Lucanio. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for being here. Mm, so South Africa, if you want a piece of Lucanio uh, and you also want to go and check out exactly what he's done with uh, another designer, the Lucanio Coots uh, scarf that you've seen on the show today, we're giving it away and you've only got until 4.30 to apply for that and it's simple, as simple as sending us a tweet or a Facebook comment. You can go to our Facebook page, there's a post there for you to comment on with the way that you wear your scarf. So take a photo of the way that you like to wear your scarf. Uh, you can also post that photo on Twitter on at afternoon chat using the hashtag afternoon express and Lucanio will have a look through all the photos choose his favorite and that person will get to walk away with the scarf on the show today now from fashion to beauty the Revron love squad uh, are made up of five of SA's top beauty bloggers each representing a unique color in the color stay makeup foundation spectrum today Brett Robson shares her secrets on blending and creating a graphic seductive look take a look Hi, I'm Brett and the theme for this tutorial is seduction. Now today's look is basically going to be a graphic bold liner paired with a subtle pink lip. Now for me, I feel like you can never go wrong with graphic liner, like you can literally pair any look. But if you're going for a seductive look, I think a pink lip would be perfect. To start off this look, I'm going to be going in with the Revlon Colorstay Makeup Foundation in my shade which is medium beige number 6. Now I know a lot of women get concerned about foundation and can your skin breathe and does it actually look like skin? And the thing is I think it's all about blending your foundation in and also about choosing the correct shade for your skin tone. Now the nice thing about this Revlon Color Stay Makeup Foundation is that it comes in 27 shades. So that means that you can find the perfect shade for your skin tone. So I like to apply my foundation with a brush but I do actually blend it in with a sponge, just patting it in to my skin. And I mean, the thing about foundation also is that you literally just need to start with a little bit. You don't need to go in with like a full face. Start with one pump, and if you're happy with the coverage, then just leave it at that. The Revlon Color Stay Makeup Foundation has really good coverage with just one pump. But if you want something with full coverage, then maybe you add a second or third pump. We're now going to bronze up the face with the Revlon Color Stay Press Powder in the shade Cinnamon. Now, because the focus is really going to be on the graphic liner, you don't want to put too much bronzer on, you just want to go lightly into the bronzer and then just warm up the face. We're now going in with the Revlon Blush in Racy Rose Number 8. Now, just like the bronzer, you don't want to apply too much blush on your face because you just want to add a little bit in just to give you a nice a fresh face look. I'm now going into the Revlon eyeshadow palette in Moonlit and I'm taking color number three over here on my brush and I'm just going to put this all over my lid. The focus of this eye look is the graphic liner so you really just want a subtle eyeshadow that was just going to even the eyelid. I'm now going to take the Revlon Color Stay Skinny Liquid Liner and I'm going to create the graphic line. Now I love this applicator because it's perfect if you are not an expert when it comes to winged liner. It is easy to apply and hopefully with this tutorial you can get your winged liner perfect every time. So now that we've completed our liquid liner, we're going to move on to mascara to finish our graphic eye look. So we're going in with the ultimate all-in-one mascara from Revlon. 
Now this one is super special because it's got a power mini wand. It's going to give you everything you need in a mascara. Now I don't normally wear mascara on my bottom lashes, but this brush is actually the perfect size if you do. It will really get in there because it's so tiny. It's gonna get in there and cover your lashes really good. I'm finishing off today's graphic liner look with the Avon Super Lustrous Lipstick in Think Pink. And there you have it, your seduction themed look. Absolutely gorgeous. And if there's one makeup style that I'm completely obsessed with, it's the winged eye. It's my staple look. I oh. absolutely love it. I've honestly never walked into the show once before and ever seen uh, your makeup looking anything other than amazing. So I don't know how I, women, honestly, I've seen, I've seen. Hello, have yeah. you seen my makeup artist? She's like God's gift to the, to the world. She's amazing. I don't know, women, you guys do a really, really good job. So those yeah. who do spend their time like Although trying. Although I do and... look like this without makeup as well. Like, Ooh, all right. Like <laughs> it's so cool to be receiving these tips because I think a lot of girls out there just don't really have the chance to be able to explore the different options to them. Yeah, so. and guys, I mean, you wear a lot more makeup than most guys. Oh, because I work on TV. It's <laughs> mine's a job, all right. Well, Brett Robson and the Revlon Love Squad will be sharing sharing their love tips and makeup tricks every Tuesday and Thursday on the show. So don't miss the next episode for more love look tutorials with Revlon Color Stay Makeup Foundation. Remember, you can follow the campaign online by following the hashtag, hashtag LoveSquadSA. Love is on. After the break, it's time to share another moment with Five Roses. South Africa's favorite tea is expertly blended to ensure that it remains of the highest quality consistently. It's this commitment to excellence that Five Roses puts into making the perfect cup of tea, which delivers its uniquely superior and distinctive taste. Five Roses salutes South African women who too are committed to excellence. So today we'll be chatting with Lauren Bjorkis, author of international bestsellers The Shining Girls and Zoo City. She's joining us for a cup of delightfully fragrant Five Roses Earl Grey Tea, an aromatic blend of quality African teas and the citrus flavour of the bergamot orange. So don't go away, we'll be right back after the break with Lauren Bjorkis and Five Roses, right here in The Loft. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, Lauren Bjorkis, award-winning novelist and international bestseller, is back in our loft to discuss her work and life as an author. With added titles like comic writer, screenwriter and journalist under her belt, she certainly has the makings of a true literary genius. Welcome back to The Loft, Lauren. Thanks so much, Jean. Now, you started off as a journalist mm -hmm. and then you just decided... Not well, for me anymore. I've not got to quite. move on. <laughs> How did your journey move? I wanted to be a writer since the time I was five years old when I found out that you could make up stories for a living and get paid for it, that that was an Amazing. actual job. I was like, that's it, that's what I'm doing. Um, and it just took me a long time to get there. And journalism was one of the ways uh, that I managed to find a way to actually get paid to write yeah. um, and to have adventures. I mean, journalism is actually about having adventures and like going out and talking to people and getting out of your comfort zone. Exactly. And that really fed into my writing. So I'm very grateful that that's the career trajectory I took. Totally. I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for the Help to Read project. Oh, I love that. And it's always my favorite story to tell, just that reading is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the most important tool you can have when you're young to empower yourself with. So was your youth obviously just filled with Nancy Drew and just writing from a very young age? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I started writing stories when I was five when I found out you could do it. Um, and. Yeah, Nancy Drew, Lord of the Rings, um, Dragonlance series. I was like a total geek. I, I kind of still am. Um, but yeah, stories are how we understand the world. And it's how we understand who we are in the world and what the world does to us and, and how we react. And I think it's so vital to everyone that, that storytelling and reading is greater understanding and empathy. And now one of your stories, I think The Shining Girls, mm -hmm. is now optioned for a film and a TV show. I mean, that's so ridiculously exciting. How did that happen? Well, I have really great agents who uh, shop my stuff around. Actually, three out of my four novels have been optioned. Um, so Zoo City, The Shining Girls and Broken Monsters, which yeah. is going to be a TV show. Um, and there's some interesting directors attached. Uh, In South Africa, I mean, how does the business of it work? Mm. You write a book here, yes. gets published here, mm -hmm. and then what happens to it? Does it get released overseas or just here? And who picks it up? How does that happen? So I have an international agent, and my one bit of writing advice to everyone, apart from finish the damn book, <laughs> um, is to make sure that you don't sell world rights to your books. Okay. Because my 
agent sells every new territory. He's based in London. He's a really amazing, sharp-nosed, like, pit bull of a man yeah. um, who just does the deals. And amazing. he... He sells it, you know, he sold it to 26 different countries. And every time it sells to a new country, that's free money. And it might be $500, you know, in Israel, but that's still like $500 free dollars. It's amazing. Does it um, get translated? It gets translated. And sometimes the translator will email me and, and, and say, what the hell is futsek? And, <laughs> you know, these interesting South African words. What is it, Tsotsi? Um, and I have to, you know, we have an email communication. And it's really interesting to see how the process goes. And then you have a film agent who then approaches production companies to see who wants to... Okay, um, so now that. which book is a TV show? So Broken Monsters has been optioned as a TV show by Endemolt in the US. Okay. And they've got a very exciting uh, young director attached. Um, the Shining Girls has been optioned by Leonardo DiCaprio's production company. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't met Leo, we haven't like hung out on his yacht. Okay, when you do, <laughs> you're gonna say that there's this girl Jeannie. Uh -huh, oh, absolutely, <laughs> like yacht party for all. Um, and uh, they've, they've been speaking to the Imitation Games director, uh, Morten Teidlem, who is such an exciting, such an exciting director. The, the Imitation Game was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, so I'm really excited. We'll see what happens. And none of it's guaranteed. You know, they're still in negotiations, so we'll see. I want to kiss your feet right now. <laughs> this is so exciting. Well, I am wearing great boots. You are wearing please don't. great boots. <laughs> what is The Shining Girls about? The just Shining... so that I can have mm. some convo with Leonardo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Shining Girls is about a time-traveling serial killer, but really it's about how we talk about female victims. Um, and I think we've seen that so powerfully recently again with, you know, Oscar Pistorius' uh, sentencing. But it's the way we talk about victims and the way we talk about a victim as just, especially femicides. The woman becomes just a bloody puzzle. She becomes um, this kind of sexy corpse. Yeah. You know, and, and all the media back at the time of the murder ran all these photographs of her bikini modeling and yes she was a bikini model but she was also a lawyer yeah. and it's devastating how we reduce it to either they have to be very beautiful or the atrocity has to be so horrendous that's the only way they actually make the news and we actually care and then we still don't talk about them as people exactly so i wanted to look at that and i also wanted to look at how the 20th century has shaped us so did that inspire the writing of the story? No, it actually happened just as I finished the book and it was about to come out. Then you're not only writing at the moment, you're also direct, uh, directing. You did Glitter Boys and Ganglands. Mm -hmm. What's that about? It was a documentary which came out a couple of years ago. I'd yeah. love to do another one, um, but it just it's all time dependent. Yeah. Um, it was about the biggest female uh, beauty impersonation, female beauty impersonation pageant. Female impersonation beauty pageant. Yeah, so it's men that take part in it. <laughs> so it's men that take part. Um, some of them are trans, trans women. Um, okay. Some of so them very relevant to, to modern day. I absolutely. Suppose. Some of them just like to dress up, and it's just you know it's just fun. Um, some of them are gay, some of them are straight, it, and it's really really interesting to see. And it was it follows three different people. Um, the whole thing is up on YouTube at the moment illegally, but you can <laughs> try and find it. Um, and uh, we follow three characters, uh, well, three real people, a mechanic, um, a gay mechanic, Eva, um, the princess who is Caden, she's pre-op, um, she's about to go through the operation, saving wow. up for it, and she's won a whole bunch of beauty pageants, and she's very confident that she's gonna come through. Um, and, and a couple of other contestants as well, and it's just interesting to kind of follow their journeys over the run-up to the pageant and kind of get into their lives a bit. Yeah. So it's really, it was really fun to work on. It's such a fascinating process. Like you said, you're also working on a, on a horror comic book now as well. Yes. Writing that, and I suppose it's quite similar to doing a documentary, is almost, and I always want, like, question the, the process and how you come up with a story and compartmentalise different people's stories and then bring it into one story. Does that make sense no, to absolutely. you? absolutely. Well, it's nice to have a holding structure. With the documentary, obviously, that's the pageant. So, yeah. you know, we can explore lives and issues you know, using that as as kind of the carrying thread. Yes. But it's all about people. Um, you know, there, there's a writing meme that, you know, people fight about whether writing, whether books should be about plot or plot driven or character driven. Yeah. And those two things are not, you can't separate them out. You can't have one without the you other. You can't have one without the other. If you have characters who are empty headed and a lot of stuff happening, that's a Michael Bay movie and it's really boring. <laughs> Yeah. Um, if you have amazing characters who don't do anything, I, I don't want to watch that either or, or read that either. You know, I want, yeah. I want the characters to go somewhere and to take me on a journey and for the journey to be happening inside them as well. Where do you draw inspiration from and where do you get ideas from, especially with some of the stuff you write, because they are quite far out there. Yes, no, my stuff is pretty weird, but it's also, it's also nice to use 
these kind of fantastical elements like time travel with a serial killer yeah. as a way of kind of shining a light on things that maybe we're tired of talking about. I mean, do we really want to have another conversation about violence against women? It's exhausting. Yeah. And fiction becomes a very powerful way of kind of exploring these themes. And by having this kind of distortion of reality, you can just create enough distance that people come to it fresh. Mm. Um, but I get my ideas from everywhere. Uh, with the horror comic, it's called Survivor's Club. I'm writing it with um, a very good friend of mine, Dale Halverson. Yeah. It's what if the 80s horror movies were real and where are those kids today? When you write nowadays, when you write a novel or when you write like a comic like this mm. one, do you think about it in a, in a, like in a book version mm. or do you consider digital as well? Like how can, how can people find your comic? Is it, is it online? It or? is online as well. Okay. Um, so you can get it at any good comic store. There are a few in South Africa, um, like Reader's Den. and Like a proper comic. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and then uh, bookstores will also be carrying the trade paperback, which is a graphic novel, which is all the issues collected together. Um, and it is online at Comixology or Amazon. So okay. you, can, you can buy it for your iPad right now. Please Amazing. do. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> so considering you do quite a fair amount of dark, quite intense mm -hmm. writing, you balance it out with feel-good stuff for kids. Yes, absolutely. So I did a Wonder Woman story for kids earlier, uh, well, last year. Yeah. Um, specifically set in Soweto and it's about two little black girls and it's about the power of the imagination. Um, and I'm working on a project which is coming up soon with a major brand. We're doing a, this incredible creative book where I write little stories about monsters like the Oogle which has eyes all over um, or a vampire bunny but you don't have to worry because it only drinks carrot juice. <laughs> and we want kids to be able to draw them. So that's going to be happening later this year. And I'm so excited about that project. It's really fun and it's going to be so cool to like try and spark kids' imaginations. Brilliant. It sounds amazing. Thank you so much for coming through. Best of luck. Oh, I really hope that all of you. your stories get turned into these amazing TV shows and movies. Thank you. Good luck. Thank Thanks you so, so much for chatting to us. Thanks, Jean. Mastering one profession is hard enough for most of us. Lauren not only reigns as a best-selling author, she excels at literary arts across the board. Five Roses salutes all exceptional South African women. May your journey lead to excellence, whatever your chosen field. Now, we're giving away a fabulous Five Roses gift pack containing an assortment of their delicious teas. So, to stand a chance to win, simply SMS the keyword Five Roses, your name and city, to 33728. SMSs are charged at 1 Rand 50 and T's and C's do apply. So visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for details. Now, join us again this time next week when we will be chatting to another exceptional South African woman. And until then, remember that nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. The competitions don't stop there, though. We're also giving away a set of three books by Lauren Bierkus, including Broken Monsters, The Shining Girl, and Maverick. Simply SMS the keyword books, your name and city, to 33728. Remember, like Jeannie said, those SMSs are charged at 150. The T's and C's do apply and can be found on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Now, after the break on the show today, we're going to be exploring kitchen trends for the year with marketing, marketing director for Caesar Stone, Trevor King. So if you don't want to put the kitsch in kitchen, you better stay right where you are. I'm Danilo Aquisto. I'm Bonnie Bully, and Afternoon Express wants you to join the conversation. Like us on Facebook and comment on our daily questions. Send us your tweets at Afternoon Chat using that official hashtag Afternoon Express and follow us on Instagram for exclusive pictures. Or let your voice be heard by calling us live during the show. For more info on our daily topic, visit afternoonexpress.co.za and check out our social media platforms where we inform you on what's trending in our loft this week. We love to hear from you on Afternoon Express weekdays at 4 p.m. Find it on 3. It's not called win a home for nothing. You, the viewer, can win one of three completed apartments at Valdivia Estate, valued at over 3 million rand by voting for your favorite design contestant's bathroom on privateproperty.co.za. Win a home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Yes, and indeed, it's time for Win Home on Afternoon Express. And don't forget that you can increase your chances of winning that grand prize apartment if you buy any Plascon product and SMS the keyword Plascon, the last six digits of the barcode, and your full name to 32979. This puts you in line to win a golden ticket, not like the one on those TV shows where you have to sing for a living, which allows you to be one of the finalists in the grand prize competition. T's and C's do apply. 
Now remember that the kitchen is that room in the house that you want to be both completely on trend yet feel homey and welcoming, all while it is also functional. It is a space where we can create and while we want it to be inspired, we also are looking for beautiful lines, perfect surfaces and usability. So this afternoon we have Caesar Stone's marketing director Trevor King with us in the loft to share with us the local and international trends when it comes to the kitchen and aka my favorite room in the house. Trevor, welcome back. Thanks, Danilo. It's great to be here. You know, you've traveled the world, and I'm very envious of your travels. You must have seen the most incredible architecture. You must have seen the most incredible kitchens, which I would just die to be in just for half an hour to make soup or something simple. Um, and there are a lot of trends going on locally and internationally. Let's talk a little bit about uh, how you think Caesar Stone are incorporating those international trends into something like surfaces. I think surfaces are an important part of a kitchen design because they're the tactile experience that you have. Mm. You're touching them, you're working on them all the time. So it's really important that, that the surface is, that you're comfortable with it, that it's working in the design of the kitchen. It's a very strong part of a kitchen design. Mm. Um, from a Caesar Stone's point of view, we've recognised that uh, the gauge of the material that we work with uh, needs to be varied. So we've introduced a 13 millimetre Caesar Stone mm. um, that allows you to use a thin surface and to mix it with a thicker surface all in the same plane, which is very much on international trend. Wow. Exciting development. Indeed. I've seen a lot of our design contestants actually using that 13 mil, which has been exciting for for us to see them keeping on trend. But in terms of the other spaces in the house, uh, particularly the kitchen, obviously, what other trends have you seen besides those surfaces becoming thinner? I think the other trend that, that I've seen is that um, the kitchen's becoming a far more intentional space. It's not mm. just a functional space. It's, it's a part of the house. It has a mood. It has an atmosphere. Lighting affects it. it, it the, the lighting is no more just functional. It's mm. now moody. It, it, it helps... Um, establish what you want to say about the kitchen. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a great addition okay. to the kitchen design. Well, let's break up each of those different elements because one thing I've seen in terms of the trends has been the idea that you're trying to create space in the kitchen. So a lot of stuff is being put away into cupboards and, uh, you know, appliances being hidden away in, in certain aspects. And why is that? And expand on that trend for us. I think because it, it just comes back to the fact that the kitchen's just not a functional space. Mm. So now you set it almost like you would set... Uh, another part of the house ready to receive the guests that you were, were receiving. Um, the, the shelving in the kitchen, a whole lot more open and intentionally styled. Uh, open shelving, floor to ceiling, uh, back, backlit walls that have uh, shelves in front of them with opaque um, uh, glass in front of them. Yeah, just a, a completely different thing to what we used to. Which is interesting, because our judges have all been com not complaining. They've been warning our contestants to keep an eye out on shelving, because space is always going to be an issue, and making sure that the contestants remain, uh, remain present to that and remain co cognizant of that, um, because I think shelving is a big thing, and I'm glad to see it's also moving into the kitchen. But let's talk a bit about lighting. You've mentioned it before. How do we go about creating trendy lighting, and what are the trends in terms of lighting in kitchens? I, th I think the trends are that, yes, it has to be functional because you've got to work and then you've got to see what you're doing. But it, it's also got to set the mood. So, so the lighting, uh, there are feature lights. Lights are part of the design. When you yeah. design the kitchen, you don't just add a light and you actually add a feature light to, yeah. to develop the design. And, and also just to add light and dark areas to set mm. the mood. I see. Great, great idea. Technology also is moving in, in a really cool direction when it comes to the, the sort of kitchen spaces. I mean, a lot of the appliances that we're buying are, are quite trendy and arty in their styles. How do we go about incorporating good, trendy decisions when buying appliances? And, and what is going on in that space? I, I think the, there's so many great appliances available in our country, and there's, there's a lot more coming. Um, in, in Europe, I was seeing that there were digital scales built into the surface mm -hmm. of the material. Um, spots that you could just put your, your cell phone on, on, the, on the kitchen surface and it would charge it. Sure. Taps that, that just, that all you did was turn your hand over the space and the, and the tap turned on or off. So great things coming, but um, right now they're, they're not here yet. Oh, well, it's going to get then. At that point, I think everyone's going to get even more and more excited about spending more time in those kitchens. Our design contestants are spending a lot of their time in the kitchen and I'd really like to know from you how you're hoping to see them use your products. Well, I'm hoping that they use it intentionally so that it's used from a, from, from a functional point of view, but also just to break some of the stereotypes of how you used uh, Caesar stone as a surface material, to move it onto the walls, to move it into uh, building uh, sinks, to move it onto even the floor and, and possibly even onto the cupboard doors. Sure, good advice. Trevor, thank you so much.
Thank you so much for having me. Awesome, it's such a pleasure. And uh, contestants, make sure you're uh, listening very, very closely. Remember also at home, entries for Caesar Stone's Kitchen of the Year 2016 are still open and will be open until the end of July. So if you have a beautifully designed kitchen which incorporates Caesar Stone that was installed anytime between the 1st of January 2015 and the 31st of July this year, this could be your opportunity to win really, really big. Simply log on to caesarstone.co.za where you can enter and find more details as well all of those T's and C's for that competition. And today is the last chance for you to vote for your favorite design contestant's master bedroom as well while you're online, so don't hesitate any longer. It's not called win a home for nothing. You, the viewer, can win one of the three completed apartments at the Valdeby Estate, valued at over 3 million rand, by voting for your favorite design contestant's master bedroom on privateproperty.co.za. Winner Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, don't miss out on top billing this evening at 8 p.m. on SABC3. This week, the darling, gorgeous Jonathan Boynton Lee travels to the Seychelles, where the brand new season of Tropica Island Adventure will be hosted to prepare for his role as Games Master whilst taking in the island's breathtaking sights fit for royalty and, of course, the cuisine. And Chris Jafter joins actress Homozo Christopher and her family for a safari adventure at the Malibu Game Lodge in Limpopo to see what her life is like off camera. And they go for a ride in a hot air balloon. Divine. I could mm -hmm. totally be doing that now. Or I could totally be like on the Italian coast, the Amalfi coast, and I'd pretty much be eating the same thing. Absolutely. That's what I'm eating, yeah. Cool. So next part, we're going to cook the pasta, right? So our yeah. ratatouille is done, and we're going to make pasta. Now, this is actually like a oh, half an hour show, how to cook pasta, but we don't have time for that. I was told, apparently. I've actually learned how to make pasta from nothing before, and it's actually very easy. The fact that I can even do it means that, like, anybody can do it. It's, it's not really that hard. It's really easy, and yeah. it's so good, so tasty. It's so nice to actually make it from scratch, but today we're obviously not making it from no, scratch. No, we've got penne that we've bought. Yeah. But, I mean, totally, I mean, challenge yourself at home. Make it from scratch. Yeah, Go for definitely. it. definitely. It's very rewarding. It is. And you literally cannot mess it up. I mean, I, I, I made it. <laughs> I don't know. I, no, I don't know. I, I literally tried after having like like a few glasses of wine, and I was chatting and not concentrating, oh, but that's when it comes and it was amazing. Yeah, you I must. thought so. <laughs> okay, cool. So, trick with the pasta: we're gonna get the water boiling. You yeah. can either salt it before or after, but the trick is a lot of salt. Why do you put the salt in so that it doesn't stick to each other? It's funny because it kind of does that as well, but also it seasons the pasta. Okay. Like you said, with the pasta, you, you use almost nothing to make it. Yeah. It's, um, you're using eggs, you're using flour, and a little bit of seasoning, but I mean, you yeah. still want to advance the flavor a little bit more. Yeah, so and I've never actually tasted like salty pasta, like fresh from the pot. Yeah. You should be able okay. to eat it on its own. That's the oh, trick. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So what you need to Would know Would you is throw butter in there as well? <laughs> Why not? No, but yeah. no, you don't need to. You don't need really? to. Really? Okay. <laughs> so it the trick be is, quite yummy though. <laughs> <laughs> if you think you've added enough salt, really? add more. Oh, okay, it's a, that as, much. It must be as salt as the Mediterranean Ocean. Okay. How poetic! I know. I awesome. Know. Cool. <laughs> so, bring the water after a rapid okay. boil, and then add your pasta, and just try not to get it just like on throw the floor. It all everywhere. over the kitchen. You, you That's have to a cook good with, idea. You have to cook with passion. <laughs> it's it's actually like in there. You must. You must. So that goes in, then that's going to cook until it's al dente. You know what al dente means, right? And al dente is that perfect spot between yeah. too soft and too hard. Wow. Oxford, can you and just, then, like, yeah. go... What can so, I say? <laughs> so it means... Um, it's because Italian men must also be al dente. <laughs> they've got to be gentle, but they've got to be tough. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, cool. I say no more. So if you can add the pesto to that pasta, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Add more flavor just to the pasta, right? With that pesto, okay. and you got a spoon over here, and you can like stir it all through. And I love pesto, pesto on everything. Yeah, Someone invented pesto, pesto, pesto ice cream, please. No. Oh, tomato, the red pesto. What's it? What's in? Tomato pesto. Yeah. Is it tomato? It is. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you to give that a mix. I'm gonna break us some more basil. We've got yeah. some basil roasted in our ratatouille. I just want some extra. Yeah. Doing an awesome job. And I just like, instead of chopping it, just tear it. Extra yeah. basil never hurt anybody. No, basil is amazing. In cool. Napoli, they put basil with literally every single dish. It is. So, I've also got some fresh mozzarella, but actually, let's add the ratatouille first. Okay. Good job. Can yeah, I, can while I I'm mixing, like, hoy. Okay, let's do this. 
Good. Right to be on top. See, I look Oops. ready to be an Italian wife. I know. You're doing such a good job. <laughs> That's good. Not. And then I've got some fresh mozzarella. We've spoken about it before. Fresh oh, mozzarella. Just yeah. like... That's not even enough. <laughs> it's not, but I've got a plan. Don't worry about it. So you never cut fresh mozzarella. You must no, here. Yes. You must. OK, cool. That goes on there. And because I know it's you, and because Whoa. I knew you were going to say that's not enough cheese, yeah. I've got some Grana Padano, the oh, godfather of all Parmesan cheeses. Yes. <laughs> oh, I could kiss you. <laughs> That goes on there. I mean, look at this dish. I what I love about Italian food. It's the fact that you're always feasting. Yeah. Good. I mean, is Good. this just not? You olive must. oil, of course. You you'll, be, you'll be so healthy tomorrow. You yeah. can run a comrade tomorrow. I mean, you'll be, you'll be good as gold. OK, so I learned how to speak a bit of Italian from a James Bond movie. And what all I have to say after this is, Uno. Ratatouille para questa bambina. Oh my goodness, what does that mean? I just want this. Um, one ratatouille, I'm asking for this little girl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a little rusty, but I'm good. Okay, this is amazing. And look at this. Younger. Does this not look like an episode of Eat, Pray, Love? Yeah. <laughs> amazing. I mean, how sensational sure, is that? Don't forget, if you guys there want you to get go. the recipe by the Made with love. Zera, a recipe and the shopping list is available for you to cook everything you make on the show. I think this is dinner tonight for me, for sure. It is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely dinner for me. Just because I saw how beautiful your scarf was, I thought <laughs> oh, we needed you. something just as magnificent. I'm doing a cute scarf. <laughs> <laughs> Can you actually ask you, before we have to rush off, uh, sure. just about the, the link between the rich and the poor, we're having a conversation over here that I think is important that everyone knows about. Is how is fashion bridging that gap? Well, that's the thing. Um, it goes back to our responsibility as young fashion designers that we need to identify the gap and we need to meet the gap. So the more fashion designers that are out there, the more people that we can contribute and add on to to give those particular needs. Wow, sure. that's absolutely amazing. Thank you for that. That is so important. Thank you. And so thank you so much for, for joining us on the show today. Thank you so much for you Thanks. as well. And we have the winner of that absolutely gorgeous, luxurious scarf. And we will be sending it to you as long as I don't steal it <laughs> after the show today. So congratulations to Vusi Makatsi. And... <laughs> And this is what made him win. This is what he had to say. He said, to help be enigmatic, that's how I love to use my scarf to accentuate my personality. Congratulations to you. Now, don't miss the show tomorrow because the amazing, gorgeous, talented Elvis Blue will be here on Afternoon Express. So thank you so much to all of our guests. Thank you, Clem, thank you. for taking me to Italy this afternoon. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow at 4 on SABC3. Good night. Um, now let's get stuck in. Yeah. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, Samo winning singer and songwriter Elvis Blue joins us to chat about his latest album and we're joined by the cast of the stage production The Inconvenience of Wings. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel-good production.